Hey everyone, it's Justin. Thank you for watching and welcome to my house. That's Justin's house. In this video, I want to show you how to automatically tag your visual task board cards with a label or a tag in ServiceNow. Uh, a user asked me this question. You can see it up here right behind me on the screen. How to automatically add a high priority label to a priority one incident slash task. Now I'm going to show you two use cases. I'm going to show you what I did to see if this even worked because I wasn't even sure I could do it. And then we're going to build that particular use case together so you all can go and recreate this if you want on your own. This is my visual task board. It's how I keep track of all my content that I'm creating for you guys. And I've already set one up so it'll automatically tag. And you can see my tags here at the top. I've got podcast, service now, run, gardening, tattoos, others and low priority. So I set up one that would automatically create or automatically associate a podcast tag, a service now tag, a run this tag, and a gardening tag with only a three-step workflow. Let's try it out here real quick. Let's go ahead and add a card to pending and we'll make sure we include in the description of this Otterly Allison Podcast Test. And literally what my flow is going to do is it's going to, my decision table actually, it's going to check to see if the um, Otterly is inside the short description for that one. So I'm going to go ahead and save that. Uh, oop, I'm having a misspelling there and we'll submit. And that should create a task on my board. You can see it there. And if I scroll down, you can see it automatically already got its label for uh, utterly awesome. Actually, the label is just for podcasts. It's the red one here. And if I filter now, we can see there's my test one automatically with that label. Um, if I had done something different, like just Owlsome, Owlsome podcast test, it's not going to create that tag. It's looking for the word utterly and it won't go ahead and auto tag it. So this is working exactly how that user requested. And let me show you how I did it. First of all, I have a flow. The flow is triggered off the visual task board card table. That's VTB underscore card. And I did a filter because I didn't want all my tasks or my task boards triggering on this. I said where the task content type is content task. So I have a special table in my app called content task. And so I just basically say, hey, go look at the task type and make sure it's one of my tasks, not something the system is using. Oh, and I only want this to run one time. I don't need this to run over and over again. Once that's done, I'm gonna make a decision. I'm gonna decide the appropriate tag that I want applied to that task on the visual task board. So I'm gonna use a decision table in ServiceNow. If you haven't checked these out, you've gotta check out decision tables that are life-changing. And all I'm passing is what triggered this workflow or this flow in the first place, and that's the content task or the task record. So I'm passing that to a decision table. Let's look at the decision table. We're saying, hey, pass me a content task, and we're gonna to refer to Justin's custom table. And if that content task has the word garden, otterly, run, or SSH in the title, it's automatically gonna apply a label, gardening, podcast, runs, or service now. So it's gonna return the appropriate label just depending on which one of these matches. And the way I've got it set up, it's gonna go on first match. So if we scroll down here, it's first decision matches, and it'll go ahead and make a decision about which label. Then all it's left to do is create an entry record in the table label underscore entry. And when we create something in that table, we need to set a, new, a few fields. They're gonna show up here in a second. And those fields are the target table, the table, um, the key, which is going to be the sys ID of the record in that table. It's what triggered this flow. We're going to give it a. Um, we're going to give it the label to actually associate with it. That's the tag in ServiceNow or the label. And then I'm going to give it a title. This is just I noticed what everything else in the system was using, so I tried to mimic that, which was visual task board card created dash and then the uh, date time. And I used the start date time from this flow. So if you look at the trigger here, we've got run start date time here at the top. That's what I actually used uh, for the date time. And then the target, the label target, this is just text, visual task board card, right? So that is as simple as it took, all it took to make that happen. I wanna do the one for incident now, like that user asked for, so let's go ahead and do it. Auto tag incident. And we'll wait for my application to load. This should put it in my Justin's house application. Good, it did. I'll go ahead and hit submit. And we're gonna have it trigger off of the incident, or no, I'm sorry, the visual task board table, but we're gonna filter where that task is an incident. So we're gonna do created or updated. We're gonna select the table, VTB underscore, whoops, 
VTB underscore card. There we go, visual task board card. And we're gonna add some filters. So I'm gonna do uh, search for task, and then I want that field just like I did in my previous one for task type. So we'll scroll down, scroll back up because I scrolled too far. There we go, task type. And we're gonna do incident. Lots of different tasks in service now. This person just asked for high priority incident. I'm actually gonna do two high priority and low priority, but that's it. We're gonna say visual task board was created or visual task board card was added to a board and the task type is incident. You may wanna add other filters there. And again, we're gonna do only run once. So we'll click on done there and then we need to make a decision. So we're gonna do flow logic, make a decision, but we don't have a decision for that. So we'll say decide appropriate incident tag and then we are gonna hit this plus sign to create a new decision table. It's that easy. We don't have to have it ready ahead of time. We're gonna do it right here, live in front of you. If you remember, while that's loading up, our format is we have an input, we have, we're have we checking for something. In this case, my case, I was doing short description for the incident, we're gonna check the priority, and then we have the label that we're gonna pass back. So let's go here, we're gonna give it a name, um, decide incident tag and we'll create and continue. I'm using the words tag and label intermittently, um, but let's go ahead and add an input and we'll say, we'll call this the incident and this is gonna be a reference to an incident record and we'll just pick the incident table. If this happens to you, just be patient, click the X, type in an I, it might happen again, click the X, type in an N, it might happen again. If it doesn't, type in a C. Just wait for that search, it's a little kind of like a bug um, for these fields. And then, so that's the incident table. We're gonna make it mandatory, that's it. Now we got our input done. Let's go ahead and add a condition column. We're gonna call this one criticality. We'll just label it that there. Our input is gonna be the incident record. And instead of referencing the record, we're gonna evaluate a field. So let's go ahead and pick the field there. And I believe it is priority, um, priority, there we go, priority, it's a choice. Um, and there we go, default operator is gonna be is, click done, and that's it. So if that priority is critical, we're gonna add, or we're gonna pass the label or the tag for critical. So let's go ahead and do that. This is gonna be a uh, label, is gonna be the column, and then the result type is gonna be a reference to a tag record, which is in the uh, label table, I believe it's called. Let's see, oh goodness, there we go, L, I think it actually might be tag T A G. There we go. Tag and the the name of it is called label, but the the description of it's tag. So it's just a service now nuance there. So we got that, and then we're gonna go ahead and select. I think it is high priority. Yep, high priority. There we go. Done. So that's that case. But I wanted to show you that power of these decision tables. So let's go ahead and add another choice there because I think pretty sure low priority is one of them too. So let's go ahead and pick low, click OK, and then we'll add the label low priority. There we go. So that's it for my decision table. I'm gonna go ahead and save that. Everything is created. And if that incident is critical, it's gonna apply high priority. If that incident is low, it's gonna apply a low priority label or tag to the task or to the card on the visual task board. So while that's saving, I'm gonna hop back over here to Flow Designer and uh, actually we actually need that to save. Okay, that's my old one. That one is still saving. We need that to save so that I can pick that decision table in that action in a Flow Designer um, in order for it to work. All right, everything's saved. So let's hop back over to Flow Designer and we should be able to pick on that, pick that one. We'll just say decide incident tag there it is that's the one i made and i am not going to use branches you can see them right there use branches i'm going to turn this off um, we don't need branches for this one but we do need to pass the incident record remember the incident record is what triggered this workflow so all we have to do is click here click here to the visual task board record and then down here there's going to be a task record that task record is going to be our incident record so click done and it looks like my branching is still there i thought i turned that off so let's go ahead turn off use branches and now my branches are gone. All right, we decided the appropriate incident tag and we're gonna get back an incident tag. So next thing we need to do is we need to create a record in the label entry table. That's the table where the association between a tag and a record on a visual task board is done. So we'll just search for label underscore entry and there it is, at least that's named the same. And then we're gonna go ahead and do those field values. And I don't remember what I did, so I'm gonna come back over here and make sure we do the same thing. So table, table key, label, title, I can remember that. Um, table scroll down and then table key and then we did I did label and then I think it was target let's look there 
Table, table key, label, and title. That's what I did. Um, the target was populated for out-of-the-box records um, using a URL, and I don't know how they did that. So uh, for the table there, we can actually pick that table record um, from this one right here. So we're going to associate the visual task board table. That's what triggered our flow. The table key, that's the sys ID of the record that triggered the flow. So let's go over here to visual task board and we'll pick sys ID. So that's, we want to do that to the visual task board card sys ID um, and for that table. The label we actually got as part of our decisions. We just go to make a decision. It has a record and one of the things is a label record. So we're going to pick the label record there. And then for the title, I did um, visual, let's see, visual task board card created space dash space and then we did the date so if I go to my picker here I'm gonna go to the trigger and there the run start date time and now I have this set up just like my other one so that's it two actions one trigger we're gonna save and I'm gonna be brave and activate this afterward and we're gonna test this out together by creating an incident on a free form visual task board once I confirm that those labels exist so while that's doing that let's go ahead and um, go to visual task boards and we're going to create one from scratch. Freeform means it's just not going to auto populate. I'm just doing that for demo purposes. We'll do a freeform board. And um, one of the things I might add on here is an incident. Actually, I can't add an incident to a freeform board. So, um, yes, I can. Let's go here. Um, we'll go to, we're going to save this board Justin's demo board for YouTube. And that should save that, and I should be able to come back to that now. So let's go over to the incident table now, and let's go find a critical incident. And so, oh, you know what we want to do first before I do that? Sorry to go back and forth on you. Um, let's go make sure that those labels exist. So we had high priority and low priority. Okay, so they both exist. So we need to find a critical and a low incident. So let's go to incident.list, and that should take us to all the list of incidents. And we'll go ahead and filter. So it saves us some time. We'll go priority is one of uh, critical or low, whoops, low or critical, and then we'll run that, and now I should only have low and critical ones. But let's make sure we do a new one. So this is new and it's critical, so we're gonna add this um, to a visual task board, and I should be able to pick the one I just made. There we go, Justin's demo for YouTube. And then I want a low one that's uh, not close. Um, that's okay if it's closed, it doesn't matter. Let's go ahead, IBM is out of space. We're gonna add that to the visual task board, and there we go. Now, that flow was activating in the background, so technically, when I added those to the visual task board, that should be it, they should be done. So let's go back to our history then, and click on the demo board, and uh, they should be labeled. Okay, so IBM is out of space did get automatically labeled it got labeled with the low priority system is down interestingly did not get automatically labeled let me go ahead and hit refresh here make sure that it's just not still running that flow in the background um, those flows run asynchronously yeah so it didn't run for some reason let's take a look at this incident and make sure that it's critical and then I want to make sure I chose, I don't know if you saw when I was picking the fields there. So the priority is critical there. Um, when I was picking those fields there, um, there was two high priorities and two low priorities. I might have picked the wrong high priority. So let's go see if that's what I did wrong um, or did incorrectly. We'll go ahead and close this one. We don't need it anymore. And let's choose the other high priority. So I'll just backspace that. And we'll choose the second one. And we'll click out of there. And we'll click save. And what we need to do to get that flow to trigger again, hopefully, is just change something about this critical incident. Um, I'm just going to do, well, I need to change something about the card. So let's just change it to doing. And that should change the state, I think. It should run that flow. Just definitely changes the state. Um, and then let's, let's put another label on there. Let's call that an idea just for fun. And I'm going to refresh this and see if it gets labeled with the critical label from that flow. No critical label yet, still got my idea label. And to so troubleshoot this, we'll just go look at the executions. It may be erroring out, um, so let's go look and see if there's an error. All right, everybody, I'm gonna cut this a little short. Basically, I, off screen, I looked at both the, the, the flow got triggered, but it didn't get re-triggered. And that actually was intentional on my part. I didn't want this firing over and over and over again whenever an incident moved around on a board. So not surprised. So since I changed that high priority, let's go back to the incident table that we are on there and find another high priority one now that I've changed which high priority tag that I grabbed. So we're going to go to the list of uh, incidents and we're going to look for um, we're going to look for high priority incidents. 
All right, here we are on the list of high priority incidents. That's the one I chose before. So let's go down and grab one of the other ones, Oracle Application Server. So I'm just gonna right click, add to Visual Task Board. Let me try that one more time. And we should get the prompt for which task, task board. There we go. And let's head back to our task board. And I'm gonna hope that this actually works. And um, let's see, request for help Oracle application is high priority. Yes, so it got automatically labeled with high priority. So I'm just gonna filter on high priority and work. So I just basically chose the wrong tag in that first example. And the, the window that was showing the executions was taking forever to load. So I just, uh, off camera, I went and looked and saw that it did it, but it didn't rerun. So, and that was intentional. I didn't want these to rerun over and over again. So to summarize, you can definitely automatically add tags or labels to your cards on a visual task board with a simple flow here in Flow Designer. Two steps one trigger make sure you do the proper filtering make sure you do any proper logic of thinking about how much how often people will add things to visual task board or move them around on a task board um, because you don't want to cause performance issues and you don't want to cause conflicts um, in the system as you're creating these different records on the tables but that's how easy it was you got to learn flow designer visual task boards decision tables and all of that stuff in this one video I hope you found this video helpful if you did please like please subscribe or share it with somebody who you think might be interested in automating labels on their visual task board. And until next time, don't forget to always be learning.